Hello and welcome back to Present to Connect. This is the second in a series of videos that I'm making about a talk that I do called Present to Connect. This is not going to be quite as good as the actual talk that I do, but it's, um, if you can't get to hear me talk about it, this is a good refresher or substitute. Uh, my name is Mark O'Mara. I'm an English teacher in Geelong, which is a regional city in Australia. The stage I want to talk about here is the first thing that you do when you're building your presentation and it is called the design stage. The design stage, as that um, picture might suggest to you, is actually done on pen and paper as far as I'm concerned. I know that some people in this day and age swear by kind of mind mapping tools that you can use electronically, but I think for just getting your ideas out of your head and in some kind of organised form, it's still good to put a pen or pencil in your hand and use a piece of paper. You don't have to, but this is just my advice. I use computers all the time, but I do think that pen and paper is still the most efficient way. You can put in words, you can put in pictures, and only you will ever see this. But it's a good way to actually be rigorous about your thinking process. So I highly recommend that you do the design stage in an analog way, and we'll move to the electronic stuff shortly. What I think you should do first is brainstorm. You might like to kind of try and write out your ideas in sentences if you're that sort of person. You can do a mind map. You can do whatever it is that works for you. But like the guys in this picture, your brainstorm should be an actual storm. I think that sometimes when we say brainstorm, we have this kind of mealy mouthed exercise where we just expand on ideas a little bit, where we just flesh them out. But your brainstorm really should be quite a vigorous exercise and really put everything down. Everything that you think might go into your talk. You're not going to use it all, but get it all out there and see what it is that, you know, what's every single thing that you think you might want to talk about. Because you're going to want to see what they have in common. In particular, you're going to want to identify what your actual main message is. Because if you've got seven important things to say and they've got nothing to do with each other, that's actually seven presentations. But most people are not like that. They have a collection of things, but they have an overarching message. And sometimes they'll tell us about the seven things. Well, when I say sometimes, I mean most of the time. People will go into great detail about seven things, but they won't actually be clear about what they all have in common. And before you start constructing your talk and thinking about what goes in and what goes out, be clear about what you want your audience to understand. And it's also really important that you be clear about what action you want them to take at the end. How do you want them to be different once they've seen you present? Because if you're just trying to commun um, communicate information, then send them a document, give them a spreadsheet, you know, write them a list and put it on the fridge. As far as raw information transmission goes, presentations are not particularly good for that. They're great for communicating passion and they're great for making a personal connection and they're great for persuading people. But if you just want to hand across information, then I really don't think a presentation is a very good form to do it. So what is the action that you want people to do and I'll tell you right now the action I want you to do when you've finished listening to all of this or you've heard me do this presentation is I want you to do better presentations so that's my call to action the next thing you do once you've got your three big or well, sorry your one big idea is go back and look at which are the three strongest ideas that will back this up because you're going to have all kinds of things you can bring in to back up your central idea, but you don't need to use all of them. So you go back to your brainstorm and you pick the three best ideas. So looking at this slide here, my one message is obviously about evil. Let's say my message is avoid evil. But I'm going to talk about speak no evil, I'm going to talk about hear no evil, and I'm going to talk about see no evil. I don't want to talk about four or five ideas because people just get overwhelmed and they tune out. Two seems flimsy and one just seems kind of too instantaneous. I don't know why, but there's something about three. It's a kind of magic number. Three ideas supporting it are good. People can cope with that. I highly recommend it. As you're crafting it and thinking about these three ideas, I strongly encourage you to think about what stories you can tell. People are persuaded and engaged by stories. It is as simple as that. For a very, very long time, most of our knowledge as human beings was transmitted by telling each other stories, and this is still true. Most people go and see, you know, narrative films before documentaries, and even documentaries these days are telling a story, or at least any documentary that is at all popular and convincing to people. So don't just give people facts, tell them stories. They can be stories about grand and global figures, about mythical figures, about yourself, about the institution that you're talking about. But think about how you can work in stories, and think about it now before you start putting together a slide pack. 
The other thing that I want you to leave yourself open for, and you might not write this into it, but I want you to be open to it, is allow yourself to be funny in the way that you are funny. I've run into people in the past who've thought, oh no, you, you must be deadly serious when you're talking about deadly serious ideas. I just don't believe that this is true. I think that when we are laughing with somebody, when we share a moment of humour with them, we really connect to them. And this is what presentations can do really well. They can enable us to connect, hence why I call this present to connect. So you're not all going to have the same way of being funny. And you know what, sometimes you're going to think something's funny and the audience isn't going to go for it. But allow yourself to be funny, even when you're talking about a serious concept, because people respond well to humour. I don't think it makes you look like a lightweight. I think it makes you look like a human being. I'm not saying that your presentation should be a stand-up comedy act. That's a whole different genre that I'm not telling you anything about. But I think you should allow yourself to be funny. Now, before you fire up the computer and start finding images, building slides and all of that, I think you should think about what images are actually going to go into your slide. Because when you get to the next stage, I'm going to be suggesting that you fill your slides with big, vivid images and very, very few words. But you can lose a lot of time faffing around on the internet and a lot of money if you're buying images, getting the wrong images for things. So rather than just shopping around on the internet, which can be a massive waste of time, actually draw out, maybe not as sophisticated as here, but draw out the storyboards of what your presentation will look like. So you know you might want your first image to be a clock to represent time, if you're talking about time management. So do a quick sketch. Do you want a close-up of a clock? Do you want a grandfather clock? Do you want a watch? Do you want a stopwatch? So that you're clear about the image that you're looking for, and then when you go and search for it later on, you know exactly what it is that you're looking for. Anyhow, so that is the end of the design stage. By the end of this, you should actually pretty much know what your presentation is going to look like, what your three main points are, what your call to action is, what your overarching point is, and even what your images are going to be. So you could theoretically, if you were, you know, fortunate enough to hand it off to somebody else and say, please build me this slide back because I've already done the thinking behind it. This is actually the stage that gives you a really good presentation. So give the design stage the proper amount of work. I promise you it's worth it.